So um, uh, the, the advice is as follows, and um, I'll just read, read the, um, the advice out. So the statements about the whole of golf resort in the strategic regeneration framework are already a matter of public record and aligned with the council's aspirations to support the Royal Lake Golf Resort by signing of the development agreement. The strategic regeneration framework does not add anything new to this already publicly stated position. If council tonight approves the SRF, then it becomes a material planning consideration, which is one amongst many. Okay? Thirdly, in terms of a planning application being submitted for the Royal Lake Golf Resort, the starting position would remain the statutory land use plan being the unitary development plan and as the Royal Lake Golf Resort would represent a departure from the UDP policy, the applicant would have to demonstrate very special circumstances as to why the development should be granted permission. As a departure, and if the planning committee were to recommend approval, then it would need to be referred to the Secretary of State. And the, the officers remind me that they've covered this position in every committee report to members uh, on this issue. Um, the approval of the SRF as a material planning consideration, and this is the important bit, does not change this position or fetter any future planning committee <coughs> decisions. Um, and therefore, in the light of these uh, arguments, the head of planning uh, therefore feels there is no need to refer this matter back to Cabinet further consideration. So my summary of that advice is it becomes, the SRF becomes an, uh, just another material planning um, consideration alongside possibly a whole plethora of others. And it is entirely up to the planning committee the weight it chooses to give to this document or, or anything else. It does not fetter the, uh, uh, the ability of the planning committee. And I trust the planning members of the planning, planning committee to uh, use their uh, wise judgments to make a, a, a to come to a view about this document or anything else that forms a material uh, planning consideration. So for those reasons, Madam Mayor, uh, my recommendation to Council is that we uh, vote against the, the, the amendment and, and we accept it. So thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Um, now, the seconders, do they want the opportunity to speak? Extensions.
is lost. So can we now um, vote on the substantive motion? Thank you. All those in favour? Thank you. All those against? Thank you. Any abstentions? No abstention. Thank you. That, that is the reverse. That the vote in favour 33, votes against 22, with one abstention, the motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. 
of the Jackson Region of Oxford to have to have reports. However, this would normally be in the end of the business, and yet we move up to number one, which affects all the other notes to the ocean. So can I ask this is treated as an emergency any other business, as it was last time when Councillor Davis and Councillor Lewis moved in secondly in the emergency debate for Hoxall. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. There are three points there, quickly. Uh, the first is in respect of uh, the Mayor's decision to refer motions or other notices of motions uh, to committees and other bodies. Uh, and Council may wish to note that in this case it was referred to two bodies, uh, the Council's own scrutiny body, but also then because it was considered uh, to be an issue that affected the whole of the city region to the joint scrutiny uh, committee for <coughs> the city region. So that was the decision of the Mayor. Uh, in respect of uh, the motion on the ferries and the question raised as to whether this uh, was uh, requesting council to, in effect, rescind the previous decision made in the previous six months. Uh, the council and I had a, an exchange and I gave a full and formal response, uh, which was, in essence, uh, it did not seek to rescind the previous decision, but actually moved on to another item. Uh, that was uh, our opinion. Time and discussed uh, fully with the mayor. <coughs> the last, in respect of whether this uh, item should have gone to what you call any other urgent business at the end of the agenda, uh, there were two comments. Uh, one is personal, uh, which in local government there's no such thing as any other business, it doesn't belong on any agenda. Uh, because uh, to provide for public access, there should be something on the agenda. The exception is when the chair of the committee, or in this case the mayor of the council, uh, considers that something is urgent. Uh, if it's urgent, it can be brought before the meeting. Uh, the reason for that is stated by the chair of the meeting, if it goes in a minute. Uh, and of course it is within the gift of uh, the chair of any meeting uh, to move uh, where something should be considered on the agenda. Uh, and in this case, it is, uh, given the urgency involved and the uh, implications of the guillotine further on, uh, this was considered to be the most appropriate place, uh, and that's the decision of the mayor and the uh, vice president. Okay. Thank you,
uh, position. I think that's, uh, that's a very really helpful piece of advice. Uh, so this is really just uh, making uh, a, a statement really about the, the very concerning news that we, we heard yesterday. Um, I heard it on the uh, on the BBC about the PSA group, the new the new owners of of Vauxhall uh, Motors, uh, announcing that they intend to share 400 jobs uh, at the LW4 plants um, by the end of, of this year. Um, we've we've obviously debated Vauxhalls many times in this chamber before, but I think hopefully this will be supported by all sides of the house. Um, you know. Stating the blind will obviously say that these jobs are absolutely essential and critical for our, our economy here in the world. And I would argue in the wider um, uh, region, both Liverpool City region and Cheshire and Ellesmere Port. And really this, um, this motion, Madam Mayor, is asking Council to agree to uh, take all appropriate action and we're, we're still uh, finding more information about the implications of the announcement, but take all appropriate steps to ensure that we play our part as a local authority in making sure those jobs are, are protected and, and secured and the plant at Ellesmere Port remains uh, in place because um, you know, it's such a crucial kind of economic asset for, for the local area. Uh, so what, what that form of, of action will take, I'm now happy to bring further uh, reports back to Council. It may involve lobbying governments, the company, uh, working with our colleagues in Cheshire West and Chester because I know they have a, uh, obviously a concern about this. But um, I do, I am very concerned about the news yesterday. I know that uh, they're saying that, 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 that these uh, redundancies will be voluntary, but um, to take forward the jobs out of a, out of a factory like Belgium Report is, is really worrying. And I think we need to be vigilant and use whatever influence and, and plant we have to uh, join with others, those other partners I've mentioned, to make sure this, this uh, plant remains a viable um, factory for those key jobs that, that many of our residents rely on for their livelihoods. So that's a perfect information. I hope the uh, council will support it. Thank you, Madam. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. My group will be delighted to support this in any way we possibly can. Um, going back to previous governments, the now leader of our particular party, when he was set in state for business, spent an awful lot of time travelling around the world, supporting this company and making sure that they actually uh, were the company or the plant that actually built the last uh, new uh, vehicle they produced. Uh, we are really concerned about the proposals that are being put forward by, by this uh, PSA group, given that they are two companies that are well known in Europe, and building vehicles of their own particular model. I am absolutely certain, uh, I'm sure, my neighbours, and I would say that readily because I'm one of, I think I live the closest to Box Hill's plant, as it is, I live right by Junction 5 on the motorway. Five of my neighbours have been knocking on my door telling me that the fears and the worries they've got. They've been working here for an awful long time, and they, they honestly believe that this is the thin end of the wedge. Uh, two of them actually stated to me, and they're only young chaps with young families uh, that they believe in five years' time there won't be a, uh, a business here. That's how, that's how much it's scared the people locally that they use them. Uh, and we will do anything we possibly can to support you. We will go to all the people, we will support you writing letters to whoever you want to do to make sure that we can contain, contain it and keep it into our, our uh, goal character. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Councillor Thank you, my brother. <coughs> Obviously, the news from Vauxhall is clearly a great concern for many of our residents who are employed by Vauxhall, and as the leader of the council stated, the wider economy of the world. Uh, the reduction of sales in Africa was, was known by, uh, to be down by 2.6% to the end of August across Europe, and it's been known prior to this weekend's announcement. So I hope that we are engaging uh, proactively with all our large employers on an ongoing basis to ensure that we can move quickly issues like this arise in future. It's also public knowledge that when PSA took over Vauxhall, that they, they confirmed that they would protect jobs till 2021. Obviously now they are citing that Brexit uncertainty has uh, led them to put things on hold and they require further clarity before they can confirm resources at this time. 
However, the 2021 deadline was always a future risk for the plant, as Ellesmere Port would have to compete with other European facilities, such as, excuse the pronunciation, Glimmers in Poland, which also produces the Astra. Uh, I hope that the council has also been engaging to support any future bid that the uh, Ellesmere Port might be undertaking to ensure the future longevity as the old of them colleague but um, into that you know this isn't the, this is only the beginning. We do need to make sure that we are supporting uh, Vauxhalls in all that they are trying to achieve at Ellesmere Port. Um, I do note that in the strategic regeneration framework there are comments made regarding moving away from cars and towards public transport, which whilst admirable and to be supported does not take into account <coughs> the move by government to make all cars electric by 2040. And I would hope that as part of our regeneration plans, we are looking to improve the charging infrastructure on Wirral, uh, for which I think there is funding available, and also that we are looking to support companies like, like Vauxhalls as they transition away from fossil fuels to renewable energy drive systems, in line with the strategic framework wording about supporting the renewable energy sector, thereby protecting jobs. But I can ask that the plans to support Vauxhall jobs at Ellesmere Port by the Council are circulated to all members so that we can all be involved to help. So I'm sure this has got cross party support and hopefully all members can be kept up to date. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thank you, Madam Mayor. Clearly, uh, an issue of this uh, importance to the economy uh, and not least the families of those employed there. Uh, demands urgent action from the authorities, not least this council. Uh, Madam Mayor, I think it's important to, to remember that uh, the motor industry in the UK is amongst the most competitive in the world, and certainly uh, the motor production in the UK, I think it's believed on the last figures, uh, was 50% more productive than our European uh, rivals. Uh, Madam Mayor, as a former councillor for LISO, I am well aware of the number of people employed in LISO at Vauxhalls, uh, and also in the wider supply, supply chain, and certainly the 400 jobs that have been cited at this particular plant uh, representing, I think, uh, from memory, I think it was uh, 1,800 uh, out of 4,500 Vauxhalls employees in this country are based in Ellesmere, of course. So certainly, Madam Mayor, on behalf of the Conservative Group, we have no hesitation in supporting this urgent notice of motion. Uh, and also, I think it's important that we do continue to talk up uh, the motor industry's prospects, both in, both in this country and the uh, supply chain and the ability of uh, manufacturers in this country to export their goods around the world, uh, regardless of uh, free trade blocks. But also, I think, particularly to those, uh, last year, 1.7 million cars came off the production line in the UK, aided in no small way by the dedication of the workforce at Vauxhalls, uh, which I believe was a 42-year record, imagine that. So certainly, as I say, on behalf of the conservative groups, we have no hesitation in supporting this uh, notice of motion. Uh, <coughs> obviously, um, <coughs> having had uh, 32 years of Oxford Moses, I have um, a great feel for the place and a great feel for the people that work there. And um, it, it was a shock when this news came out last night. So I've talked to some people in Oxford only last week. Um, there has been rumours. Uh, I don't think at this present moment in time, I did say this to the leader. Uh, the announcement that we've got today has been pressed out by the, book, by the, by the press, uh, which went before the, the staff uh, at Boxall's pressed each other. So I think that, in, 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 in the first instance, is <coughs> appalling for them to do exist. However, I would say that the support from this council tonight and what I've heard is very gratifying. And I think that the people who are waiting on these jobs <coughs> will we we'll have to just wait and see what is behind um, the loss of someone to say 400 jobs out of the 1,400 jobs, out of the 1,800 jobs must go. <coughs> it could be, could be, and I say it could be, that I've been in this position many a time, anyone who in Vauxhalls know how they do work. And one of the things is we did have at one time 12,000 employees in Vauxhalls working there. 
and that is down to, as I say, 1,800 now. That's down to the automation. That's down to moving forward with the times. And the next models will be announced in the next 12 months. So it's important, in some ways, the Vauxhalls have got to trim and do that to retain the rest of the 1,400 jobs. Then that's the sort of thing that we really need to have the, the proper information about before we start making any decisions of what we're going to do, what we're not going to do. Because I'm sure those people in Vauxhalls at this present moment will be totally apprehensive and wondering what, what is happening. Uh, trade unions and all have been informed today. Uh, everyone's been informed. So I suggest that we just wait for tomorrow morning, find out what's happening, and then put the weight behind the House Council. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Very briefly, Madam Mayor, uh, I'd like to thank uh, members from, from all sides of the Chamber for their support. Um, I'm talking at the moment to a whole variety of people, my counterparts in, in Cheshire West, in Chester, um, Lord of MP, Justin Mayors, um, trade unions, to find out how best we as a council can support um, the, the plans that ultimately me brought. Um, I take on board all the, the points that colleagues made and will undertake to <coughs> keep in touch with the, uh, the other party leaders uh, to make sure that clearly that whatever we do, we do uh, on the United Front, which I think is um, is, is a sensible way to proceed. So happy to give that. Uh, comment. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move to the vote now. So, for those in favour of the motion, the High Council of the Day please share. Uh, 
kind of gives the website and a bit more information. Uh, the campaign now is to get the, 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 the law changed to require um, <coughs> public service vehicles, coaches and buses, etc. Um, to, uh, to have to, to adhere to this, this standard um, in terms of buying tires or other things. Unfortunately, and, and Madam Mayor, I want to stress this, is, this should not be a policy political issue. Um, unfortunately, Francis, up until, until she met with us, was, I think, struggling to get government support for this campaign. Um, I, I know that Ian and Leslie, who are at the meeting, do fully support the campaign, I mean, your, your group does, but I think her plea uh, really was for us to, um, to, to go back and make sure our respective parties uh, were on board with this campaign. I know and I'm pleased that you know, Jeremy Corbyn has, has come out publicly and, and, and said that the Labour Party supports this campaign. Uh, I know Francis was going to all the party conferences in an effort to, to get support from a wide uh, political spectrum of, of particularly members of, of, of Parliament. Um, I, I'm aware that Andrew uh, sorry, Maria Eagle MP is, is due to move a motion shortly in Parliament around this, but clearly it will be government support if, if it is going to succeed. And obviously Francis, um, in common with uh, many other local authorities, 